going on guys back with a, another video I just realized the other day when I was going through my history of videos that I'd done plenty of muscle body restoration videos but I really have never done a simple G.I. Joe first issue land adventure restoration so luckily I got this if you saw my Watts in the shop number 19 the other day I got this lot of G.I. Joe figures and I got this uh, land adventure in and uh, he's not in too bad a shape. Um, I'm really interested to get him apart and see what I'm working with here. And we're going to do just a simple restoration video of this guy. Um, the Land Adventure is one of my favorite G.I. Joes, so I look forward to doing this. Okay, a few things to note here. He's missing his vintage dog tag. And he's mincing his vintage holster and revolver. So those are things that this guy doesn't have. Luckily for me, I have some spares lying around, so that will be an issue for me. He did come with his original boots. Um, I'm assuming there is his original boots. They're in great shape. They almost look mint. So pretty excited about that. No cracks in the backs. The BDUs, or the uh, frog skin or island fighter camo, that's common for these guys. It's not in too bad a shape. I'm really not sure if these two go together. Um, the camo pattern on the top looks a little bit different than the camo pattern on the bottom. I've seen, um, I've seen this before. I'm not really sure if these go together, if somebody just had a couple different guys and just threw some pants and tops on them. But what I'm going to do with these is the, the decals smoked. So I'll take the decal off and I'm going to soak them in some Tide Free and Clear. So it's a non-harsh detergent. Uh, just put them in cold water and soak them overnight and I'll rinse them out. And that's the only thing I'm going to do with these. And I'll just let it air dry to try to clean out some of the the dinge and dirt in these. That will be an issue. And then we'll look it over, check the snaps and a few other things and make sure that it looks kosher. The figure itself is awesome. Um, no cracking in the knees, which is common with these figures. If you uh, see a lot of these old G.I. Joe Land Adventures uh, or any G.I. Joe figure from that, for that matter, has a lot of cracks in the knees or in the shoulders. There's no cracks on this guy at all. The elastic is extremely tight, which is awesome too. Um, the flocking has seen a little bit of action, so there's some wear there. I'll, uh, I'll take care of that here in a second. The hands, the old Kung Fu grip hands are smoked. Um, they're, they're shot, which I see that a lot with these old Land Adventure hands or Kung Fu grip hands. Um, the plastic from the 70s, um, it breaks down over time, and that's just common. That's if you if you know anything about materials, you know that you know nothing lasts forever. And depending on how this was stored in the hot or the cold or the temperature variations over the over the years and decades, it'll break down the rubber in these hands. So um, you don't always see a good set of kung fu grip hands. If you do, they're usually discolored or or there's other issues with them, but these are these are smoked, so I'm going to uh, take those off. I'll keep the pegs. I do have a set of Guyper Man, or I think Captain Cosmos. I'm not sure which replacement hands. I think they're Guyper Man hands that I might put on there, but I might go a different route, so we'll see as I get down the road on this restoration. So I will remove the hands. Um, the flocking, back to it. I'm going to take it off. I usually use 91% isopropyl alcohol and soak it overnight. But since COVID's hit, alcohol at the store has been hard to come by. So I'm going to try out this 70% isopropyl, which I don't think will be an issue. I'll just leave it in there for a little while longer. So, um, so what we'll do is we'll just pop his head off, take out the hands. Um, and then we'll get to work restoring the head and uh, I'll soak the uniform and dig out some spare pieces and we'll be back in a bit to see what this guy looks like. All right, guys, we're back. As you can see, I got the um, shirt and pants soaking in that tide free and clear. Just 
put it in an old salsa jar and shake it and oscillate it around. Let it, I'll let it sit for a couple hours. <clears throat> and then I'll rinse it out and just lay it flat to dry. The head obviously is in the uh, isopropyl alcohol solution. So it's uh, sitting there. It's going to sit for probably 24 hours and then we'll commence deflocking the head and then prep it for flocking. The hands, I pulled them out. Like I said, these things are just smoked. You can see it's just oxidized and they're trash. I could take the pegs out, obviously, of the hands, and then I have these, uh, sorry for that, I have these hands, these replacement hands right here. These are nice reproduction rubber kung fu grip hands. Uh, they work great. Um, Cotswold Collectibles coll uh, carries these, but I think they sell out relatively fast, and I don't know if they've even gotten a restock in them since COVID hit, so I'm not really sure when they're going to get them. But uh, they work really well. I use them for quite a few projects. However, if you've seen my video on the Gung Ho Grip retrofit for the G.I. Joes, uh, if you're not familiar with that video, go back through my catalog and you'll see it. I uh, retrofitted uh, pegs to a set of Gung Ho Grip hands. So I might go down this avenue. You know, I don't I have these these ones here that I did. And, uh, you know, they're cool. I uh I haven't used them for anything, so I might I might actually use the gung ho grip hands in this case, in lieu of the uh, Guyper Man hands. So I don't know. We'll just have to decide when he gets finished to see what see what I want to go with. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you like the uh, retrofitted gung ho grip hands? I use them on several things, but uh, they're kind of cool. So we'll pause the video and let all this stuff kind of sink in. And uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about flocking. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, you can see that I've removed the old camouflage from the dirty, tide free and clear. There's a lot of grunge in there. And it was kind of what I thought on this camouflage. Um, they're two different types. One's a little bit more vibrant than the other. I don't think it has anything to do with fading over time. I just think that there was some inconsistency in the fabric probably back in the 70s when they made these. So I'll probably, I have a separate spare set of BDUs that I'll probably swap out for these. But anyway, I want to show you that this is how I clean them. I just soak them for a while and this tide free and clear and you can see it does a pretty good job of cleaning them. Then I just lay them flat to dry. Obviously, you don't want to dry these in the dryer because these are 100% cotton and they will shrink and it will ruin them. So, um, don't ever do that. You can see I've uh, discarded the old Kung Fu Grip hands and the old label off the uniform. So, we'll just trash all those. Some more of the discarded pieces. Um, I did salvage the two pegs. I could switch them out with these Guyper Man hands. Um, I may or may not do that, but we'll have to wait and see. I did get an email from Cotswold Collectibles the other day saying that they have another shipment of these coming in anytime in October. So if you guys are interested in getting some of those, um, they should be available on their website. I've got the gung-ho grips already on this guy. We'll just wait and see what he looks like when it's all done. Now, I'm going to set the camera down here. And uh, the head has been soaking in this 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol solution. And I've started to do a little bit of the flocking removal just to test it. So you can see, I just use this X-Acto knife with a, you know, a scraping motion. I try not to damage the plastic. And uh, if you watch my other flocking videos, you'll, you'll see me do this type of stuff. And, uh, just remove the flocking. It comes off really easy. The 70% the, the works well. Um, I left it in there a little longer just to be sure. But deflocking him is pretty easy. This is probably this is probably the most pain in the butt part about restoring a GI Joe is just getting all this old flocking off the head. So I'll continue to do the deflocking, put him back in the uh, 
solution. Let it soak a little longer. And then I'll clean the head up. I'll probably use a wire brush and uh, kind of go over it a little bit to get all the rest of that small hair follicle off. And then we'll get ready and flock him.